Welcome to this tech tip provided by Imaginit Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and today we're going to be taking a look at a process for creating an animation that appears to drive a particular part along a given path. Now a few years ago I actually created an animation for a Christmas card and I posted it up on YouTube about this little train that follows the path and since then I've gotten a lot of questions as to how I actually did that utilizing Inventor and this video is a response to the people who have asked that particular question how do you drive a part along a path inside of Inventor now before I get started diving into how I did it I do want to make a couple of points and that is this is only possible inside of the Inventor Studio environment so as an example I've got the train up on the screen here and I'm going to go over to the environments area and I'm going to activate Inventor Studio. Inventor Studio has a command that allows me to drive a parameter and that's all that's going on here. And if I activate my timeline, you can see that as I drag the timeline, the train leaves the station and follows the path all around the track. Uh, so if I pull that backwards over here to the starting point, you can actually see that I can actually drive a part along a path utilizing the Inventor uh, application but only inside of the Inventor Studio environment. So let's take a look at how we actually did this. I'm going to jump over here to uh, really a base part uh, and if I were you know in this particular example if I were to show you this base part it's actually invisible and this is really the part that is allowing the motion to be applied to the assembly. So let me turn the visibility of that back off and we'll jump over here into a copy of that that I have ready to go. So let's talk about what you see on the screen already. I've got just a simple part, piece of plate, and I've got my path laid out and I've offset. This is the uh, railroad tracks uh, on either side of the main path that's right in the middle. And then uh, I've actually drilled a hole uh, on to a point so that there's a point here and I've drilled a hole here and I'm going to pattern this hole along a path. So before I go through patterning the hole I do want to show you that I have a parameter already set up. So if I go over here to the parameter table I have a parameter in place called drive me and for our process it's very important that we make sure to make this a key parameter and export it. You'll see a little bit later that with the Inventor Studio application, we have to have this parameter keyed and exported to make it a favorite. So now I'm ready to pattern a hole. So back on the Model tab, I'm going to select the Pattern tool. And I'm going to select the feature that I want to pattern. And then for the direction, I'm going to select this path, this sketch that I have on the base part. Now I want to flip it. I'm going to go in this particular direction and the value, I'm going to change this to distance. I'm going to list my parameters and select drive me. And currently now I believe it's one inch. And we'll click OK and we've got that actual pattern set up. Now there's one more thing we have to do with the pattern. Let's go ahead and edit the feature. Let's go back. We need to expand it and select the start point. This is very important for our process is that we start on this particular point here. Notice that the start point right now is at the end of this line. We want it to be there. So we'll click OK and now our pattern starts at this particular point. So now let's take a look at driving a parameter with Inventor Studio. We'll click the Environments tab and start the Inventor Studio environment. And I actually already have the parameter set up as a favorite. Um, if you want to know how to do that, there is a parameter favorites here. You select it, and if you select the part, you'll actually see the parameter that's exported, and you can mark it as a favorite. So you have to do that before this next step. But now we're going to use the command to drive a parameter, or animate a parameter. We'll go ahead and select that, and we'll pick our uh, parameter here. You, for the select, we'll come over to the animation favorites and select drive me. And I want to go from 1 inch to 500 inches for this example. Your numbers will obviously be different on the project you're working on. And then I want to specify the amount of time this is going to travel. And I'm going to set up a duration here of 30 seconds and we'll click OK. 
Now I'm going to click OK for both of these. Let me cancel that. And if I back this up, you can actually see how this hole follows the path. Very, very easy thing to do. So now we have a hole that we can use on this base plate that is following a particular path. And then in, we can put this in the assembly and then we can start constraining objects to this particular hole. Now I'm gonna put this back to zero and I'm gonna copy this part for this example. So we'll finish Inventor Studio I'm going to copy this and start a new assembly. And then the first part I'm going to put in here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste our original, our base part in. And then I want to show you how we hook up the train engine so that it follows the hole. So I'm going to select place component and I've got my part here, my little uh, engine for the wooden train, and we'll bring that in. And if I zoom up on the part, I want to take a second and talk about a few of the things I've put into the part so that I can constrain it to our base plate. And the first thing is this work axis. This work axis actually goes right through the part and centers where the two wheels or the front axle would be, right in the middle of the front axle. And then the next thing I did, let's go ahead and let me activate this part. The next thing I did is there's a sketch underneath the part and on the rear axle, I've drawn two circles and again, for this example, I'm going to turn on the visibility of these two cylinders or surface cylinders. Now you don't need two of them. I did that just to, as a little practice option. Uh, you might only need just one of them for the example that we're going to work on. So let's go ahead and start putting or constraining the engine onto the plate here. So we'll start off with a constraint and I'm going to take the base of the engine. We'll sit it onto the piece of plate and I think the offset value is one inch. And if I were to just check the side view, you'd see that the uh, wheels are sitting right on top of the piece of plate there. Now the next constraint that I'm going to use is the axis for the front wheels. And I'm going to constrain it to this front hole or the, the patterned hole. So I'll wait a second, make sure I get the correct hole, and we'll put that there. We'll click OK. And then the last constraint is a transitional constraint. And the last constraint has to do with, we want to select this cylinder here and this surface here. I actually took the path and extruded a small surface on the base part so that we could constrain this surface to that part. So I'll click OK, and now the train is ready to go. Uh, if I go over here to the Environments tab, we'll go back into Inventor Studio. We will, uh, we need to define a, a, a parameter favorite. So in this case, we're at the assembly level. We need to pick the, the component, and then we need to identify the parameter as our favorite, and then we can derive that parameter or animate it. So I'll select OK, and again, we'll go over, select the parameter, and again, we'll go from 1 inch to 500 inches, and we'll specify the time duration of 30 seconds. And we'll click OK. Now let me back this up, and let's go ahead and try to take a look at how what we have here. If I were to drag the timeline, you'll see the train following the path exactly like what we wanted to do. Now, to do the entire assembly, what you would do is repeat this process for every engine in the car. This is the my best advice for you is to actually do th this way. Um, a lot of times people will try to come in and put the next car and constrain it to the engine of the train and expect the train to pull it. 
Inventor's going to have some trouble solving all of those constraints. So what I would advise you to do is drill another hole for the front wheels of the box car and then uh, pattern that again on the base plate so that that hole moves as well. And then you have a hole that drives the engine and a separate hole that drives the box car, a separate hole that drives the tanker and a separate hole for the caboose. You just keep repeating this process until you get the motion that you're looking for. Now, when you're finished, let's go ahead and finish up Inventor Studio here, and we'll go back over to our main example. When you finish, we're actually going to turn the visibility of that base plate off. We're going to turn the visibility of all the work features on our components off. And we might, you know, add a part that uh, looks like the train track. We might add a little cabin here in the middle just to spice up the viewer to jazz it up. But really, the important uh, driving aspect is this base path part that I showed you earlier. And that way, when you come into Inventor Studio, you can go ahead and set up and drive that parameter to get the resulting animation you're looking for. Now you can also use this process on a 3D path. I have another simple example of driving parts on a 3D path up on the screen here. And again, if I go into Environments and activate Inventor Studio, I can click my timeline and you can see how I've got the parts following a three-dimensional path. And it is really the same exact process. I'll show you a couple of differences here though. Let's go ahead and finish the studio. I'm, I'm going to open up the, uh, the base part here. We'll just sit here and open this up. And I'm going to change the view a little bit. So instead of driving a hole, I'm going to drive a work point. And if I look over in the browser, you'll see where I've got a pattern. I've, I've placed a work point uh, on the line, and I'm patterning the work point using the 3D path as the object to pattern on. And then again, just like we did before, if I go over to Inventor Studio, I believe I've already got this set up. I can come in, and I can control where those points are or I can drive or animate those points along the 3D path and have them go around the object. So once you have this animation set up, all you have to do is, uh, in your main assembly, constrain your following, point, uh, your following parts to the points that you're driving, and the next thing you know, you're able to animate those objects following that 3D path. So this is going to conclude my brief example on how you can drive a component on a 2D or a 3D path. Of course, as always, if you have any additional questions about the contents of this tutorial, please contact your Imaginate Technologies support representative or your Imaginate Technologies account manager. Thank you.